In this video, we're going to go over how the train scope mode works in Giants Editor. In this case, I'm using my blank map from the FSG modding GitHub that you can download. The link will be in the description. And I also have a video on the YouTube that explains how to run that as well. Okay, so uh, pretty much we're going to do a lot of this type of stuff. But we'll start over here where there's nothing going on. Okay, so... First thing we want to do is open our terrain scope mode. So by clicking this, it takes a moment for it to load, but once it's loaded, we can start doing cool things. Now there's a bunch of little settings over here. Notice here when, okay, so let's say this is not open, right? Uh, takes a second, of course. Now, if we open our terrain scope, it'll automatically open this window. So that's pretty handy, right? And it'll go to the correct tab. So if you do the different ones, we'll do those in other videos. It'll go to the different tabs. Okay. So this one is just for basically altering the train heights in different locations. Okay. And on here we have a selection for just terrain. Can't really change it. And then we've got the size of the brush. So the bigger it is, the bigger the circle. The smaller it is, the smaller the circle. You can also use your middle mouse button scroll. The, the middle scroll wheel, whatever. You can scroll it to make it bigger or smaller if you'd like to do it that way. Now, if you're needing to go bigger, you can actually edit this yourself and then click outside of it and it'll be the size that you want it. Uh, or you can just use a slider. Whatever works best for you, okay? And then we've got uh, presets, which you can kind of set your different settings here and then create presets for them so that way you can go back to whatever your settings were if you want to duplicate it elsewhere and make it a little easier on yourself you just set these how you want them and then click add and then it'll add it and then you save it and all that good stuff so you can kind of play with that okay we have a uh, hardness which is how um how steep it is so with the hardness at zero uh it just oh, let's not do erosion let's do add it just kind of moves it up a little bit okay why's the why's that not going away <laughs> oh there it goes oh wait okay i'm gonna look somewhere else let's look over here okay so train height or train sculpt mode as they call it okay hardness is how how steep it is um so the higher the value the the more jagged it'll be the lower the value the smoother it'll be okay and then we've got our brush type so we can pick between round and square okay that's pretty handy there and yeah so undo that now i usually use the round that way it gives it more of a natural look using the square kind of for me it doesn't really give it that natural uh, look or feel or whatever so i like to use the round most of the time for this but it's up to you you do you okay now we have our left mouse button our middle mouse button and our right mouse button and then a opacity for each and basically what this is is how much it moves so for example, if I put it on zero and then I'm on the add, so I'm going to left click. I click once, nothing happened because there's zero. I can sit there and hold it. Nothing happens, okay? Now, if I increase it to one, one click will move it up. That's one click, okay? So undo that. Now, if I hold it down, you kind of have to move around a little bit as you do that. It'll move it up a lot. See, it's, it's, it's a big change, right? Where if I just kind of leave it down here at one of the lower, it's not so much of a change. Okay? So that's what the opacity is. And then the hardness, if I want that to be more jagged, see how it's a little rougher looking? Okay? And then uh, let's say we just set the both of them high. We can just basically create a little plateau. Okay? See how steep the uh, train is there? So that's what that's for. And it kind of goes the same for all the others. It's how how much it alters the terrain, basically. The hardness is how uh, how smooth it is. So if it, the higher the hardness, the less smooth it is, if that makes sense. Okay. 
And then uh, we can actually change which what the mouse buttons do. So you've got add, which raises and lowers. Smooth will smooth it out. Subtract will lower. Okay. Which, uh, let's see here. Yeah, subtract will lower. And then replace. So whatever this value here is set to, which I can just go here and hit control, left control R as in Roy or run or I don't know, control R. And then anywhere you click or wherever your cursor is at when you hit control R is what the replace number here will show. So let's say I just want to bump it up to 70. Okay. Now that that's in replace, then I just click and that'll put the terrain height where that tool is at 70. Now I've got my hardness and my opacity way up. So that's why that's so steep. So let's try it again with them a little bit lower. And it kind of has to put it at the height that we have it set at, which I guess is higher than I thought it was. Let's see. Let me move up here. So while I'm in this tool, what I'm doing is I'm holding the Alt button, so I'm not escaping from the tool, and then I'm just kind of navigating around. Uh, this is the right-click and mouse movement, okay? And then this is the middle mouse button. While I'm still holding the left alt key and then the uh, uh left mouse button here okay so you can kind of move yourself around a little bit okay see how it's flattening to that height now yeah okay we're gonna undo that because that makes no sense to have it well for this case i don't need that but anyway so the replace that's what that does if we set it to uh 65 that'll be 65 will be there, okay? And then 60, 61 would just be a little bit, which is still a pretty decent amount. Now, the more you do it, it'll create like a level area. So if you want to level around a building, then you would control R where that building is, where the, the height that you want it to be, and then you would use this replace function to kind of... Uh, level out that terrain where the building is, okay? And a lot of this is just like in-game, just a little more detailed, I guess, is the way to put it. Yeah. All right, so that's a replace. And then erosion, this one's a little bit tricky. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see it here too well. That's what these little blue dots are. That's the erosion. And let's see, I don't know why those are still showing, but anyway. So erosion basically just alters the terrain to be a little jagged. So it's not, whoa, so you do it too much, it does that. You don't want to do that. Oh, wrong button. So it gives it some realistic, oh, I guess some realistic erosion. So it just kind of alters the heights of the terrain. Let's see if I can kind of see it a little better here. Yeah, you can kind of see it a little better. I don't know. Maybe wireframe? Let's see what wireframe looks like. Yeah, you can't tell. But it, it just kind of gives it a more natural look to it instead of it being so flat and smooth. Because Earth is not flat and smooth, right? But yeah, so that's erosion. I don't really use that too much. Uh, and then we have slope. Now, slope is a two-part process. So with slope, you'll what it this does is it creates a slope from one location to another. So for example, um, let's create a let's add, and we'll create a little spot over here that's a higher level. Okay, let's say that we want to create a slope up to that point. So what we'll do is we'll go to slope target. Now, this will be the high point or the low point. Either one works. And then we'll click. Now, see how it has that little purple dot up there? Now, if we go to slope, and then we start here, and then we just slowly move towards it, it's going to create a slope going up to that target. Okay? Now, you can kind of play with it and get, get the hang of it and... Um, 
and create some cool terrain, I guess, with it. Uh, what this is designed for is if you're making a ramp or something, oh, you want to be straight on when you're doing that. Uh, here we go. And just kind of go easy on it. Probably not use such a wide uh, brush there. So yeah, you can create some pretty interesting terrain doing that. And that's basically for if you want to create roads going up to places. But I use a different method for that now. I use the spline paint by or terrain height by spline tool, which uh, will set the height of the terrain to what the spline is set at. And you kind of do some smoother, more um, traverse terrain with that for like roads and such. But uh, I will cover that in a future tutorial. Anyway, that's how the slope tool works. Um, so you got a slope target. You set the slope target, which you can set the slope target down here. Oh, click once to remove it. Click again to add it. Remove, add, remove, add. So if we put it down here, and then we go back to slope, and then we click uh, right here, and then we can move the set the terrain to that height. Now you'll want to kind of follow that line, so to speak, and it'll it'll do its best to to uh, do that. And then you can just smooth it out. But usually you'll I I like to run add on the left mouse button, smooth in the middle, and subtract or replace on the right, and then uh, smooth it so you can smooth it out a little bit here. Uh, and we set our uh, opacity up just a little bit so it smooths it a little more. See how it's smoothing it out there? Yeah. But yeah, so that's how you use the different tools for the terrain uh, sculpt mode. And I believe those are the options we have here. Place limit. Uh, you can set it lower or higher than that. Haven't really mess with that yet. You can add noise to the brush. So let's see what that does. So if we do add, let's see here. Okay, that's kind of neat. So it adds a little bit of variety to how the terrain is painted. That's cool. So it gives it a little bumpiness. See that? That's kind of neat. And then you can kind of smooth it down and make it a little bit smoother. So that's pretty realistic looking, right? Uh, what else we got down here? We can kind of play with the different settings here. And uh, the higher, the more it does, the lower, the less it does type of thing. Uh, oh, here's our erosion settings. So you can alter those. And yeah. That's something to do with pro procedural placement. Still trying to figure out how that works. Once I do, I will definitely make a video on it. Yeah, so that's how you create train in GE or alter existing train or whatever it is that you're wanting to do. So, yeah. What do you guys think? Is this something that you will find useful or uh, is there something specific you'd like me to go over? Uh, let us know in the comments and appreciate you watching and we got more coming.